Welcome! Yay! Yay! I'm Camila Gornia. I am known as the Blow Up Scale Up Marketing Strategist, and I work with amazing entrepreneurs, passionate, driven, service-based entrepreneurs who want to really get seen, blow up online, and scale up their business through launching, funnels, different ways of just making sure that they're leveraging their time and creating more money in the impact that they want. So, yes, I love that. So, something that a lot of my, so there's a lot of people that kind of come to me and ask me all, like, all kinds of questions about either social media or whatever, anything underneath the, like, the marketing uh, umbrella, if you would. But what I'm gonna talk about today is authority-based marketing, authority-based positioning, because the people that I tend to work with, people that have incredible messages or an incredible mission or a story behind their business, they are doing it because they want to make an impact. And they are also doing it because they feel something inside of their heart that they are meant to be doing this. And if you feel like you're meant to be doing something, it's almost like unfair to your audience to just keep it to yourself. It's almost unfair, like you're doing your service, as a, your, your audience as a service if you're not putting yourself out there to the biggest capacity and, and being visible. So what we're talking about is authority-based marketing. So positioning yourself as that person that everybody else sees and they're like, oh my God, of course, you're the person to do X, Y, and Z. So today, there are three different things that I'm gonna talk about today, and maybe I don't have to write it down, but we're gonna talk about authority positioning, we're gonna talk about authority branding, and authority marketing. And I'll just kind of touch on each to make sure that you guys understand uh, how everything kind of flows together. So let's move into the positioning. So a lot of times, so I like to look at it as positioning, brand, and marketing because it, you need to first understand how you're positioning yourself. And I already kind of give you a spoiler, it's gonna be as an authority, but I really wanna make sure that you understand why positioning yourself as an authority is important for you if you want to seriously like blow up online and make a global impact. Now, even if you want to, if, even if you're okay with like just doing things locally and you just kind of wanna maybe like write a book or something in the future, ha making sure that you have your mindset around your brand and your positioning and just your business in a way that's more global thinking and more authority based thinking, it's just gonna make everything easier for you. So what I wanna create and show you, illustrate this is, it's a pyramid of trust. So there are four different levels to this. So I want you to think about this as just people that are different kinds of business owners and experts or just people that you follow or people that you go to to get whatever done. So on the very bottom, we have people that are called the generalists. And generalists are people that just know all things about everything, but they're not necessarily masters at any one thing. So for example, it's like your family practitioner. Um, if your child is sick, you just, you're just gonna take them to your family doctor and like hopefully they're gonna know what's going on and you know, typically they do if it's like a cold or a flu or whatever and that's, that's great. But the problem with this is that most of, pe most of the people out there are generalists. They want to target everybody and anybody that wants to give them money. They want to target uh, in terms of specialties. They don't really have specialties. Maybe they do, but like not really. They're so open and just like anybody, like anybody that has a pulse, I will help you in some way. Even people that are making it more like women, that's also a little bit vague because there's so many different types of women out there. It's, it's kind of like, okay, that's not, it's like, I'm only working with Americans. It's like, okay, <laughs> let's calm down a little bit. <laughs> so generalists, um, they're on the very bottom because most people are generalists, but also they make the least amount of money because there are the most of them. So no one's really gonna go to a generalist and say, hey, my child has a cold, and the generalist is gonna be like, great, it's gonna be $10,000. Uh, no, they're gonna go to a different person because there's, really no, there's really no reason for them to go to a generalist and pay a ton of money uh, from that sense. So one step up is a specialist. So it's one step up because specialists, there's less specialists than there are generalists because they specialize in a very specific thing. So specialists are people like, um, if your kid breaks their leg, for example, God forbid, and the, re the regular doctor, I always pick the worst examples that I know nothing about. I don't have kids, so like, let's just pretend this is what really happened. If your kid goes to a generalist and the family doctor, oh no, your kid's leg is broken, they, he needs to have surgery, and you're like, no. 
the generalist isn't going to do the surgery. You have to go to a surgeon or, you know, the bone doctor for kids or whatever. And you're going to pay more because he knows what he's doing. And this doctor might be like, I can try. I've done it before. They're like, great. Don't touch me. Yeah. The, you, I mean, it's a little bit iffy, right? Yeah. So you're going to be more eager to dish out extra money for somebody that specializes in this stuff. And they actually do this a lot. And that's what they specialize in, right? So, so less people are doing it. And they're doing better in terms of business. It's easier for, for other people to also recognize, oh, yeah, I know this special you know, surgeon. Go to him, and he's great. I've worked with him before. Awesome. Now, one step up is an expert. The difference between an expert and a specialist is that an expert really dives into this. Like he really, he or she really, like they care so much about this that they're constantly understanding. Like, okay, so I'm researching this. I'm reading books about it, uh, attending summits, and like learning and expanding their knowledge about this particular expert, this particular uh, subject matter. So. If somebody is looking for an expert, they know that they live and breathe this stuff. They're not just specializing in it because they went through schooling or maybe it's just through experience. They actually love this stuff. And it's great. A lot of experts are also hidden gems. So not everybody really knows who they are. And sometimes they might be speaking at events or whatever, but they're not necessarily getting out there in a different way. They're not necessarily pushing the envelope in a different way. They are a little bit, but they're, there's that visibility block that's stopping them. And, they're, and therefore, they're not on the very top of the potential for making a lot of money. They are making most out of these people because they might be writing books and they might be doing different things, but they're still not really stepping out in a way that everyone's gonna seek them out. So for example, if someone, if your kid, kid's leg is broken and it's like, I don't know, mutating into like an android or something, and there's like this android <laughs> doctor somewhere, <laughs> you might go to him and you might fly to him if he's in the US. But if he's living in like Australia, you know, maybe you're gonna go, but you're probably gonna look for somebody that's national if it's like an expert. But if it's a celebrity expert, which also is an authority. Worst fan of writing ever, that's okay. that's okay. A celebrity expert, really the difference between a celebrity expert and an expert is that they're both, they both know what they're talking about. They both are passionate about what they're talking about, but celebrity expert also is pushing the envelope to get visible with his or hers like theories, new concepts of thinking, new, like maybe they're doing, maybe they're publishing new research theories, maybe they're like, putting on summits, maybe they're just, just doing bigger things in a, in a different way. So they're actually making sure that they're being seen as that authority. So somebody that's in Australia is going to be very gladly moving over and flying to LA if that's where that celebrity expert is because they know, they believe so much that this person is going to help them. Um, and therefore, they're making the most money because, of course, everybody wants to work with them. Not only are they being published pretty much everywhere, and that's just another kind of way of doing it at publicity, but everybody believes them. And a lot of it is just knowing that it works. So because they, they really believe in that, they're doing a lot of the marketing for them as well. So now that you understand why positioning yourself as an authority is important, great. So how do you actually do that? So there's actually a lot of ways that we could get into and spend like five days on it, but um, I'll do like a really quick Cliff Notes version of this. So there's two things that we want to look at. We want to look at the authority self and we want to look at the authority brand. So you can't really have a brand without the self. So we'll talk about the self first because a lot of people are actually when they're building their brand or rebuilding their brand and you don't have to be a new entrepreneur to like look at the brand. I just want to preface by saying this. I look at my branding stuff every six months or so and make sure that everything is still aligned with how I want to show up, who I want to talk to. And that's really important for everybody to do. So if you're if you're not new or if you're like Susan, you're like, I've been doing this for like 10 years. Let's calm down and let's just like look at this anyways. OK, so. <laughs> so let's look at the authority self first, because you as an entrepreneur, as an authority, you are already that person that you want to be seen as. So something that I like to do with my clients is really allowing them to step into that person that they want to be seen as. And you might not be that person right now. There might be some limiting beliefs that are holding you back or, you know, just like different, just just a whole lot of everything going on in your head. Like I'm not, I'm, I feel like a fraud or maybe I haven't made six figures or seven figures in your, my business yet or whatever. So who I am, who am I to talk about this stuff? It doesn't 
really, it's not really relevant. So something that I encourage my clients to do is to create an alter ego, and that's the authority self. So I'm not gonna necessarily walk through this exercise right now, but it's basically really understanding who do you want to show up as. And it's not necessarily the brand and like all that stuff is just like actually fit like physically as a manifestation of that person. If you were to walk into a big networking event or a big conference and everybody knew who you were and they all were just like racing to shake your hand or just like give you a hug because they've been following you forever. Who is that person that they're rushing to meet? So who is that person? Is it somebody that's like powerful and sexy and confident and just like a vixen? Or is it somebody that's more spiritual and woo and just like a unicorn? Or is it somebody that's more just like buttoned up and just very powerful and just like standing in and like, this is me, I'm like a badass. So what is that thing? How do you want to feel? So that's the, the first thing. And you can kind of, I, I like to take my clients through like a little visualization thing that I'm not, I'm not necessarily gonna do that today, but you can do that on your own. It's just literally visualizing what that would look like. And then know that you can consciously step into that person anytime that you desire. So anytime that you are about to do a speaking engagement, anytime that you're about to do a webinar or go on a live stream or whatever, just leave that regular person you at the door because the, the alter ego that you are, the authority self, doesn't have all this all those issues that you're trying to like come in. They're they're not relevant, right? If somebody's trying if you're afraid that somebody coming and rejecting you or saying something mean to you, well that doesn't matter because this is your your authority self. They're better than this and they don't have to worry about any of that. So just be aware of what that is. And then another area that supports so making sure that this authority self is actually you too. So if you are not whimsical, but you're like, my authority self is whimsical, there's a little bit of a mismatch. So just make sure that you actually know who you are first. So in general, like I'm a big believer in personal development in general. So that's probably a good thing to also do in your life as a heads up. Uh, but a nice way to kind of tie this into the brand is uh, I have a quiz actually. So there should be a link. It's just camillegorina.com forward slash uh, quiz. And it basically shows you what your primary authority brand style is. And there's a lot of these um, different styles, but it's, it's basically supporting you in really understanding how to show up actually visually as that main person of how you like to deal in your business. So are you more of a badass? Are you more of a unicorn? Are you more of like a catalyst and you wanna like make change in the world? So it's using these different elements and understanding where the pitfalls might be and how you can maximize the like attraction the magnetizing effects of each primary brand so then looking into the brand i i'm not a branding person in terms of visually so i'm not going to talk about colors or fonts or anything like that and most people that talk about branding they think or think about branding they think it's just the website or whatever you actually don't even need to have a website to be super visible to be known as an authority and to have an authority brand so it's really about understanding the brand strategy so there's a couple questions that I want you to actually answer and they, they are all listed in the workbook as well. Um, so let me just make sure I'm saying the correct ones and I'll say some additional ones as well. Um, so I'm not gonna write them out, but I'll just kind of explain a little bit so it's easier as you're filling out this workbook. So the first thing to really understand about the authority brand is who are you talking to? So again, you're not talking to just women and you're also not talking to just women 25 to 45. That's also too vague. And I don't necessarily mean you have to be so specific that it's like painful. You, I actually don't really believe in niching down and, and unless it's really necessary. So people that only talk to coders, well, unless you create programs about coding, it, it makes no sense for you to talk about just to coders, right? So um, again, my great skill of coming up with the weirdest ex <laughs> examples. Uh, so it's really understanding like who is that person that you're talking to. And a lot of it has to do with the personality too, because especially as a service-based entrepreneur, if you're working or if you want to work with people one-on-one -on -one or in a group format, if you, for example, are somebody that's a little bit more brash or direct, you don't want somebody that's more sensitive. Like, I don't tend to attract people that are more sensitive because I'm pretty direct and I'll just be like, yo. And, you know, some people might not be able to handle that very much. So personality type is very important and just understanding, like, are they open-minded? Do they, are they open to spirituality? Or do they, are they Christian? Are they, you know, if that is relevant. So I have um, one of my friends, she works with people, with Christian entrepreneurs, and that's just literally who she works with, and that's, she talks about God a lot. So of course, if she didn't say this in here, it would make no sense because it'd be missing a huge component. But if you 
don't talk about God or if you don't talk about Christianity, don't say that they're Christian just because you are, right? It doesn't make any sense. Um, so men, women, if it's both, I work with both, so I say both, mostly service-based. But for me, it's like I say they want to be authorities. They want to be seen as thought leaders, authorities. They want to eventually write books or maybe they have written books. Um, they want to be seen as that person. And it doesn't even matter if they're a personal brand or not, although you should consider having a personal brand even if you have a company that is a different name. It's, it's a little bit different from that sense, but it's just having that confidence and knowing that deep inside that you are meant to lead with value and to educate and to support people around you beyond just making money for yourself. So making money is important and obviously I show my clients how to do that. Uh, but it's really like how do you make the money to support you but also the world and also support the impact that you want to create. Because when you have a nice steady cash flow coming in, you can be creative and you can be your authority self in a much easier, more fluid way as well. So who are you talking to? Um, another thing is what is their problem? So you're not just talking to female entrepreneurs who are coaches, for example, you're talking to female entrepreneurs who are struggling with visibility and struggling with like growing their list or, you know, whatever. It's like where, what, well, why would they even want to talk to you, right? So they're not just like, hey, I just want to talk to you because I really want coaching. Nobody really wants coaching. Nobody really wants to be good on camera for no reason whatsoever. So what is the pain point? What is the problem that we're trying to solve with your offerings, right? Um, and there could be a lot actually too. So that's another thing to look at is you don't necessarily have just one person that you're talking to. Uh, most of my clients actually have three very distinct individual personas that they're talking to. Um, and for me, for example, I have people like that are a little bit newer. I have people that are super seasoned, established, and there's different types of like seven figure entrepreneurs. So I mostly look at it based on income levels. And then each offer depends on that. So my like seven figures are for VIP days and done for your services for my multi six figures to six figures are like my masterminds and then anything below that is like my other offerings so I like to look at it from that sense so that everything that I create in terms of offerings isn't just like a broad hey entrepreneur whoever you are like anything you created something maybe someday and maybe you want to um, that's really vague so it's just understanding who exactly are you trying to target with your offer and then going from there why are you different? So that's where we're going into the you because a lot of times people aren't necessarily buying from you because they want to get their problem solved because let's be honest, there's more people than just you that do what you do. And I actually, one of my clients was, she was like despairing so much. She was like, oh, but I don't know how I'm gonna be different. I do, everybody's doing this and I'm doing this. And I'm like, well, but you are different. And I would show her all the ways of how she's different, but you can't really, understand that unless you understand it for yourself so somebody could show you how you're different and unless you're open to seeing that it's really not going to make a difference for you so i really encourage you to start digging in and seeing how you are different from other people and it doesn't mean that you have to know literally everybody who does what you're doing because that's pretty much impossible but just based on how you feel about yourself what do you bring to the table that's different so maybe you have maybe it's your professional background that's different maybe it's the people that you work with that are different Maybe it's that you like to focus on a specific things that, that's different than how other people like to look at things. Um, it could be literally anything. And it could be that other people are also looking at these things, but it's just how does it all combine to create something unique for you? All right, so another question that you wanna ask yourself is what do you stand for? So this is actually gonna, everything that I'm sharing here, by the way, is gonna support you with the marketing piece too. So I'm not just asking these questions for the sake of just you like, having an exercise to do, there's there's very intentional reasons why we're talking about this stuff. So what do you actually stand for? So when it comes to causes, for example, or when it comes to different ways of approaching what your industry is talks about. So for example, if you are a health coach and you are totally like, veganism is the way to do it. I think that people should never eat meat. They should never eat eggs. They should never like, no animal bar products because then you're just like so passionate about it. Make it clear that that's what you stand for. You stand for veganism. You stand against animal cruelty. Make that clear for yourself. And it doesn't have to be as big like that. Like I'm not vegan and I, there's a lot of things that I'm like actually more in the gray area, but there's like, for example, I stand for redefining balance. And that means you need to have both the masculine and feminine energy in your business. And you need to have both the hustle and the flow. And it's, it's kind of going against people that just talk about hustle or just talk about hope flow. I think it's you need to have both. So it's really understanding like 
what is it that you really believe and how do you run your business? How do you approach your industry? When you work with clients, what are the things that they tend to come to you with and you're like, no, that, that is so wrong. I don't know who told you this, but you actually do this instead. And I understand that everybody's gonna be different. Everybody, you know, you need to customize stuff for, for everybody. That's completely understandable. That is just on the more general route if you were to teach, because as a teacher, as an educator, as a, you know, authority, as an expert, you're gonna have to find ways to make it as relevant as possible for people. And then you can kind of make it a little bit more specific from there. So what do you stand for and what do you stand against? And then what is your process? So a lot of people, um, a lot of my clients actually, even the clients that are in the six figure mark, it's kind of interesting. They don't have a process that they take their clients through. They don't have like a signature process. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a signature process where it's like, we, we start here and then we end here, but it's just, what is your secret sauce, right? So for me, it's my like blow up and scale up uh, method and it's just one of them. But it's just, how do you approach your industry? How do you approach your expertise your topics your whatever it is that you show you teach people in a way that's unique to you and it doesn't actually have to be even super unique because let's be honest like there's so many people that do what you do it's you know it's kind of impossible but it's just your way of approaching it and showing a process a formula a thing that has been proven to work time and time again and when you go through and touch through these different steps it becomes like magic so um one of my clients actually so she when we started working together, she, she had this adoption consultancy and it was just her. She was like kind of freelancing and she had a day job at the same time. And she basically supports her clients with going through the adoption process so they can have their baby faster. Uh, so she was really struggling with, first of all, getting on phone calls and sales calls and converting people to want to really work with her because why would they want to work with her to support them and then, you know, to su yeah, support them and then, you know, they still have to go through an, an agency and that kind of stuff. Like why that extra thing um, so she was struggling with the sales call she was struggling with marketing it was just like a lot of confusion around how to break out and be different so we made sure that she has a very clear process that she takes people through and she already kind of did that already but she didn't really put a name on it she didn't put stages or levels or elements or something that made it into an actual process so we put that together and she it's 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 like one of my favorite stories because she like when we we're done, she had this process, she would go through sales calls and she would go through like the marketing. And then she reached out to me maybe two months later. She's like, oh my God, every single time I go through a sales call or a conversation call or just whatever, I have this in front of me and people are just so entranced by what I talk about. They're just so excited and they, she's been getting clients. And now she actually has like three or four um, consultants under her and she's growing at her business and scaling her business. And she, you know, she let go of her nine to five like a year ago and it's just like, incredible because she has such a mission behind what she's doing so it's it's like it's amazing she's making a lot of money but at the same time it's making a difference in people's lives because she's allowing these families to be connected to their babies when they couldn't have a baby before and that's like incredible right so being able to have a process isn't just for you to like oh good that's the thing that I'm doing yes it positions you and as, as an authority and people want to listen to you more, they believe what you're saying more, but it supports them in getting the results and it supports you in getting the clients in so they can have these results as well. And then they're gonna tell other people, so that kind of moves into that. So it's really amazing. And the last question on here too, is what are your specialties? So as an authority, again, even if you're like a health coach or something, it's that's a really broad topic. So it's just understanding what are the specific things that you tend to walk people through. And it could be, it doesn't even have to be super niche. And, you know, it could be as simple as like cooking vegan food, or it could be like meal planning, and it could be, um, I don't know, some other things that are also a little bit broad, but not super broad. So just understanding what are your specialties, and you don't necessarily have to talk about that, but it'll support you a lot when you're creating content or you're doing your marketing, and then when people ask you, you're like, well, these are the things. So for me, it's like, I'll talk about leverage offers, I talk about um, authority marketing, I'll talk about sales funnels and ads, and those are the main kind of specialties that I have. So if someone comes to me and they're like, I wanna start a business, I'm like, cool, not the person for you. I talk about growing a business, not starting a business. Or like, hey, I wanna create a beautiful, you know, sexy looking, brand I'm like sweet good luck can't help you with that but good luck with that and once you're done we can talk about the marketing yeah. <laughs> portion so it's just understanding like what where do you shine the most because then your people are gonna get better results 
and then they're going to want to come back to you and it's not going to be a watered down version of you and you're not going to get burnt out as fast either because you're going to be working in your brilliance. So that's, that's the brand. It does not even have to do with colors or anything like that. All right. Here we go, here we go. Awesome. So the last section I want to talk about is authority marketing. So if you're an authority, obviously you want to make sure that your audience is connecting with you as easily as possible, especially for, uh, I mean, nowadays, especially, I mean, we're all busy and whether you have a nine to five plus building a business or you have a full-time business, you probably want to make sure that you're maximizing the amount of results that you're getting while well, with the input that you have. Um, putting into your business in the marketing. Uh, a lot of people that I work with aren't super natural at marketing and they want to make sure that they're just creating more impact. They want to create a connection, a real connection with and trust with their audience. So there's very specific things that you can be doing when it comes to creating content and putting yourself out there that's going to support you in getting that result. So I'll talk about all of them. Now I will say that it's important that you use all of these things in your business and you'll kind of understand what I mean. So on the very bottom we have text. So these are any text-based posts. So for example, um, that's your blogging, that's Facebook posts that are just text-based, and anything else that's text textual. So this is on the very bottom because most people do this. It's the easiest to do. You can literally do this sitting in a toilet, and you can write an entire blog post, and I know, have done it. Uh, <laughs> It's really easy, right? You can be sick out of your mind and you can still like muster up like two minutes to write a Facebook post. So everybody can do it. You should be doing it the most often because it's easy. It doesn't really connect with people in a very good way though because there's a lot of ways that things could be misconstrued or um, it's hard, especially if you're not a very good writer and no judgment. It's, it, it might be hard for people to understand like your humor, if you're being funny, like some people are gonna be like, what an asshole. Uh, no, maybe you're just being sarcastic, funny. But So there's a lot of ways that people can kind of not fully connect in the way that you mean them to. Uh, but it's still important to use this. So obviously, like emails and that kind of stuff, it's very, very effective and important to use. Now, one step up from this is audio. So anything that's audio-based, like podcasts, like uh, even if you have an article that you wrote or a blog post that you wrote and just reading it out loud and then having a little audio section um, on there where people can, can listen, it will definitely support you. And the reason why this is one, um, one, one step up is because it's easier to people actually hear how you're meaning to say things. And they get to hear your tonality, they get to hear your humor, or um, if you're trying to be dramatic, like they get to really be more in the story of what you're talking about. So it's, very, it's a lot more powerful. Um, and audio used to be very, very popular. It's, it's thankfully not as popular now because now we have other things that I'll talk about soon. Uh, but it's still very important. So it's easy to do. You, can, you don't have to dress up. You don't have to do anything like that. And it can still make a very big impact from there. Now, one step up, we have video. So anything like this, for example, this is, this is going in here. This is a video. Pre-produced videos. Um, if you're doing a webinar with a little video on the side, this could also go in here. And I will say if you're doing a webinar where you can't see your face, that would go more into the audio, but it's kind of in the middle um, if there's words on the side. So we're kind of looking at it from the perspective, too, of how people like to learn. So some people prefer to read. Some people prefer to listen. Some people prefer to watch videos. So you're kind of hitting all of these, which is why it's important to do all of them. So if you just love being on video all the time, that's awesome, but just make sure that you're only gonna be hitting people that that's your, their primary way of learning and you're missing out on a lot of these different types of people. So having workbooks and things like that is very effective for people because it's gonna support their learning. So video is gonna create more connection faster because they get to uh, have that visual component. They're more engaged from more than just one mode and they're able to still hear how you're meaning to say things and it's just like great experience. Now. If you're doing a pre-produced video, because things can be cut and then you know, post-production, you can put a dinosaur behind us and you wouldn't even know. And because of it, it's not super authentic a lot of times and it's easy for people um, to show up in a way that isn't necessarily how they actually are in real life. Uh, I've actually met a lot of people who have done a lot of video, but then you meet them in real life and they're completely different. So obviously that you know it's a little bit weird from that sense so just that's why it doesn't connect as as much as these other things could all right so one step up we have live streaming and the live stream is incredible because first of all it connects in a faster way because it's one high up it, people don't use it as much as they do regular video or audio or text 
Uh, so it, it's not as common to see that. And the reason why it works better than just regular pre-produced video is because people literally see everything that's going on. So if you're messing up, if you, uh, you know, if you forget what you're trying to say, people will see that, right? And you're being more authentic, you're being more off the cuff, which people can really relate to a lot. People don't really relate to perfect, like perfectly sculpted individuals that are just like never messing up at all ever. Uh, it might be enticing for a little while, but eventually they're gonna feel disconnected and you know, it's, it's not gonna be that great. So they also buy from people that they can relate to. They want to feel like they're your friend in some way, shape or form. So this can really, really support you. Um, it also shows when you really know what you're talking about because a lot of times with video, you can have a script, you can have all of that. It sounds perfect. Sounds like a beautifully pre-scripted, pre-produced, you know, creation. With this, you're often just like talking and you're engaging with your people that are showing up. You can say hello to them. So they're getting to really see that you see them and they feel special at the same time. So it's really, really amazing from that sense too. Now, if you're doing like group calls where you're like on Zoom or if you're doing webinars where it's just you and no slides or maybe a portion of it is slides, this can also really be effective as well as long as it's in live, like in live kind of format. And then one step up here, we have one-on-one -on -one calls and Skype. So I'm saying Skype, I don't necessarily mean Skype, like you have to use Skype to connect in this way, but it's you and one person, maximum of like two or three other people, where it's a very small group and it's just you guys talking. You're actually addressing them verbally and you're saying, what do you think so-and-so? And they're like, oh, well, I don't I think this. You're like, really? So it's, it's a, an actual like back and forth. So people really get to connect with you, which is why selling on the phone is so effective and you can have crazy high close rates because people like you're literally saying what they want to hear versus on a live stream or in video you're kind of guessing a lot of times so this is really effective creates a super high um, level of connection very fast and people get to see you as an authority now it's not very scalable if you're doing it on your own which is why it's important to not do it as often um, especially as it relates to all of this but it's still important to have that in place in some way shape or form even if you're not doing one-on-one -on -one calls to get people into your programs just make sure that you have that sometimes in some way maybe you're doing group calls or something where people can see you and uh, once in a while at least if you want to I mean if you don't have to that's fine and then on the very high up we have just live and when I say live I mean in person so this is why whenever people are doing live events or live workshops it's so easy for other pe for the people that are there the attendees to then upsell into the next thing because they are so connected to you you literally cannot hide anything your your body language is you know they can see everything if you're being um, trying to be somebody else they can see that right so if you're pretending to be a certain person and you're not really that or you're like feeling awkward about selling or if you're not truly trusting into what you're actually sh like supporting people with they're gonna be able to pick that up and they're not gonna trust you as much right it, you can't hide anything but on the flip side, you can sell out a full room sometimes. You can make a shitload of money. Sorry, a curse. Okay. Uh, okay, good. Uh, so you can, you can make a ton of money. Like I did a retreat uh, in October and it was just like six people. And then everybody, I had two clients there, two mastermind clients and then two of them like enrolled one of the people and I'm like, I'm not trying to sell you guys into anything. This is like a high level, like luxury retreat. I'm not trying to sell anything here. And they were just like, you need to join the mastermind. I'm like, it's closed. And then finally we let her in because she was just like, I need to be in this program. So we let her in. Um, but it's because they were able to see that I know what I'm talking about. I can support people. I, I like care about my clients and she wanted to have more of that in her life. So uh, the power of live is really incredible. But again, it takes a little while to really get comfortable with that. I think it's really fun. I love doing it. But again, it's not as often used. So don't just do live and do none of this because, you know, that's going to be kind of hard. So make sure that you just have a balance when it comes to your connection, when it comes to your marketing and then everything that you're talking about in terms of content, in terms of showing up, just have a nice balance and then you're going to be able to connect with your people in a better way.